welcome to this Palestra training video for Microsoft Project 2010, an introduction. In this lesson, we'll be creating a project plan. Setting up your project plan correctly right from the very beginning is probably one of the more important things that you can do. Making sure that project knows when the start or finish date is. How to create a project calendar and set that calendar up so project knows the difference between working and non-working days. Adding activities to the Gantt chart, duration estimates, and dates. And we're going to be using both manual and automatic scheduling here so that you can see the difference. This lesson is about getting your project plan created and set up correctly. Getting your project plan set up correctly is one of the more important things that you can do right at the very beginning. You'll notice that I'm on the file tab in the backstage view. And basically in the older versions 2003 and 2007, you would go to the file menu to name your project, create a project summary task, and possibly set the options for start dates and finish dates and all of that. Instead, in the 2010 version, we're still in the file menu, but over to the right hand side over here, you're going to see all project information. Right now it says start date the 26th. If I wanted to change that, I could click right in that box there, push the drop down and choose a different start date. I'm just going to leave it on the 26th, but setting the start date for your project is one of the most important things you can do. That way project will schedule from your actual start date doesn't have to be the current date that you're on. If you wanted to set the finish date instead and have projects scheduled backwards from a deadline date, you could set the finish date instead. It also wants to know how are you scheduling this from the start date or the finish date? Again, it would be up to you and your project. I typically use the start date because it's easier for me to anticipate a finish date by using project to do so. If it's the reverse, if you select finish date, you want to make sure that project is scheduling from that finish date. You'll also notice that we've got status dates and current dates that you can change. And then it's asking you which of the calendar templates do you plan on using? It has a standard calendar, which is currently selected Monday through Friday, eight to five with a one hour lunch break. This of course can be adapted and we'll do so here in just a little bit. If your company is a 24 hour company, you can choose a 24 hour calendar, or if there's a night shift calendar, you can set that up as well. Like I said, we'll go into the, the calendar section and adjust holidays and non-working days and so forth in just a little bit, but I'm going to leave it here on standard until I can create my own. If there is a priority for your project, you can adjust that or adapt it as well. The standard setting for all project priorities is 500. The lower the priority, the less priority it actually gets if you're working with master projects. The higher the priority, the more project will pay attention to different constraints and deadlines that you've set. The second thing that I like to do after setting a start or finish date is name the project, go into properties, and give it a project summary task. This is going to be the bolded task at the top of your project plan that basically gives you an overview of everything total duration, total start and finish dates, and so forth. In the 2003 and 7 versions, you would go into the file menu and choose properties. It's basically the same thing now. You're in the file menu and you click on the project information dialog box and then click on advanced properties. Now that I've opened up the project properties box, you'll notice that it opens up up here on the summary tab. The summary tab allows you to title your project and typically it'll say project one, two, or whatever. You can just click right here in the box and name it whatever you like. You can put yourself as the project manager and whatever company you happen to be working with. Whatever you put up here in the title box will show up as a project summary task provided you turn that option on. That option is not turned on standard, but I want it to be at the very top of my project and I want it to track totals total durations, total dates, and so forth. So in order to do that, I first have to come into properties, name my project, click OK. Then I have to go into the options tab, which is still back here in the backstage view. It's going to open up those options and I'm going to click here on advanced. And I'm going to actually have to scroll down just a little bit. And right here under display options for this project, you're going to see show, project summary task. I'm going to go ahead and click OK there 
and OK there. And what you'll notice is in the Gantt chart view, I now have whatever I typed in that box. And overall, it's going to track totals, the start date, the total finish date, and total duration. I like this because it gives me a high-level snapshot. This is not the same as summary tasks. In fact, I can't get in here and edit this at all. It's simply tracking everything that's going on below in the project and giving me totals overall. Uh, you don't have to do this, but it is something that I do like to do. And you can't just insert it and turn it on as a project summary task without first going into properties, then going into options on the advanced tab and checking that box to turn on the project summary task. You can't just insert it on the task menu. One of the other most important things that you can do to make sure that project is tracking your schedule effectively is to make sure that your company calendar is set up. One thing that I really always try and do or show people in these classes is that making sure that your calendar is matching up with reality is the most important thing that you can do. Otherwise, project is tracking days that could be holidays or non-working time. I also like to remind people that this is not your own personal resource calendar. There are options for individual resource calendars that you can use. This is for the project. When is the organization not working and so forth? In order to do that, we actually have to go to the project tab. And then right here, it says change working time. I'm going to click that button and this should look fairly familiar to you. Um, you can either use the standard the 24 hour or the night shift, or you can create your own calendar. I like to create my own with the company name and I like to do this so that I can use the organizer to copy it over to other projects. Otherwise I'm stuck with the standard, you know, eight to five with an hour lunch break. And that doesn't always work out very well. So I'm going to click create new calendar, but I want it to make a copy of the standard. I don't want to have to start completely over. I like the way that the standard is working out, but I do want to change it. One thing that I always do is name everything that I customize in all capital letters. That way I can find it and use it over and over and over again. Okay. And it's easier to see in a drop down menu. However, that's just my preference. I'm going to click okay. And then right now it's showing the name of the company. It's also showing the date or the calendar for the month that we're in, and it's highlighting the actual today's date. So I need to go through here and look and see when are the next days that the company has off. I believe the 31st at this point is Memorial Day. So I'm going to come in here where it says name. I'm going to click on the date that the event is happening, and then I'm going to click down here where it says exceptions and type Memorial Day. Even if that's the wrong date, I apologize. I'm going to click enter and it's going to say start and then finish. And what you'll notice is now the 31st is red. If I click off it, it's highlighted as an exception day, which basically means when I click on it, it's non-working. That means project will not try and schedule any activities on that date, nor will it allow me to schedule any activities on that date. I always try and take my calendar out at least three months past when I think the project is going to end. That way I don't have to remember to do it later on. Also, the 4th of July this year actually falls on a weekend, so most companies actually give you the 5th off. So I'm going to type 4th of July, even though it's the 5th, and hit enter. Now the 5th of July is non-working and so on. Now be careful, this calendar scrolls really quickly. As you saw, I probably blew past the, the Memorial Day one there by accident. But when you go through this, you'll want to just mark off days and make sure that everything is lining up. You'll notice that there's another tab here. It's called Work Weeks. And Work Weeks tabs basically are any weeks that are different from normal work weeks. For example, let's say you have a half day on um, one of the holidays or something like that. So let's say I go back up to July. Let's go down to July. Let's say Friday, the boss is feeling a little bit nice and they're actually going to allow you to get out early. So I'm just going to type early day here in the box. You can't click in the default box just like before. Early day. Yay. Okay. And then I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to reselect it. Now you'll notice that the details button becomes available. So I'm going to click on details and I'm going to say